Mr. Prosh, are we okay? Good morning, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Good morning, Mr. Hathaway. And good morning to our entire school across the street, kindergarten to fifth grade. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for anyone else that's joining us virtually and to any of our parents, grandparents, and friends that are with us today. This Thursday is Veterans Day. Uh, we will not be having a, um, an assembly celebration as we've had in years past, but I'd like you to think about at Mass today, keeping all veterans and those who have family, families, members that are serving our country here or overseas, men and women who are sacrificing their lives in many, many ways courageously to keep our homeland safe. So keep them in your prayers. Please keep in mind any of our family members who are, and members of our community that have lost loved ones and to any of our members of our community who are sick. Over the last uh, couple of times at Mass, I, it, it's dawned on me that uh, right before the Gospel, many of you probably see the teachers and myself and some of your parents do this. And you probably, maybe you do know what it is and maybe you don't know what it is. But I remember in school many, many years ago uh, being taught by the Immaculate Heart of Mary Sisters. It's a little simple prayer before the gospel, and it's a beautiful prayer. And I'd like you to bring it to your attention right now so that before the gospel, when you see Mrs. Loftus or myself or Mrs. Savag or any one of the other teachers do, make a little sign of the cross here a little sign of the cross on your lips, and a little sign of the cross over your heart. And the prayer simply goes like this. May the word of, Om of Almighty God, the gospel that we're about to hear, be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. I'm gonna say it one more time for you. So right before the gospel, we are encouraged to put ourselves in the presence of God in his holy word, and then listen to what Monsignor has to say about the holy word. So may the word of Almighty God be on my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. I would love for you to make that a part of your prayer every single time before you hear the gospel. I want to commend our um, eighth grade and Mr. Savag for another wonderful Wildcat video. I think it exemplifies the spirit and the heart of our school so well. Please put yourself in God's presence here, over across the street, put all distractions aside, and let's praise God. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the seventh grade mass. November is a special month. During this month, we commemorate all the faithful saints who have guided us to be better and stronger Christians. We honor the veterans who have selflessly protected our country. We also celebrate our school's peacemakers. In the words of St. Francis, we should all seek to be instruments of peace, showing love, patron, faith, hope, light, and joy. In being generous to all, we will find our way to everlasting life. Please stand and join in singing our entrance hymn, which can be found in the Breaking Bread hymnal, hymn number 548, Glory and Praise to Our God. Oh, 
trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him who built the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise you, our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. As we gather around our Lord's table to worship our God in this church, we join in the church universal in celebrating the dedication of the Basilica of St. John Lateran, which is the bishop's church in Rome. It is the church that is the mother church of all churches. And we are reminded that we are all called to be temples of our God as well. Let us recognize our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us together now praise and glorify our Almighty God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O oh God, from living and chosen stones, you prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty. Increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by new growth, your faithful people may continue to build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Reading from the book of Ezra, the angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water throwing out, flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the south, southern side. He said to me, this water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the seas, the salt water which makes it fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For whatever, wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. 
Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another one is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation that is already there, namely, Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to him, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? but he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do your teachers ever give you pop quizzes? You hate it when they do, don't you? Well, I'm going to give you a pop quiz right now. I'm going to ask you one question, and it's a multiple choice question. What is the church? What is the church? Is it A, a building? B, the people who come to worship in the building? or C, that which Jesus instituted to continue building up the kingdom of God? Now we all know the answer is D, all of the above. Today we celebrate the dedication of the mother church of all of Christianity, the church of St. John Lateran, built up on the Lateran Hill in the early part of the fourth century and it became the church where the popes lived. As you know, the pope is the head of the church universal, but he is also the bishop of Rome. And so the church of St. John Lateran is his cathedral, just like we have Saints Peter and Paul Cathedral, the mother church of our archdiocese in Philadelphia. And every year we celebrate the dedication of that church, that building, because it's to that church that the universal church looks for guidance and leadership. Because after all, the Bishop of Rome is also our Pope. If you ever get a chance, I strongly encourage you to visit it if you haven't already. It's a beautiful church. I had the privilege of studying for my doctorate at the university right next to that church and would go to this church frequently. It has 12 beautiful 12 foot statues of each of the apostles, reminding us that our church founded on Jesus Christ has been spread throughout the world by the 12 apostles. So the church is clearly a building, but it's also the people who gather to worship in that building. We are very fortunate to have this church right here, and I hope that you take advantage of it often. I'm so, so glad to see so many of you come here, especially in class, to study our beautiful stained glass windows, which give us all of salvation history, the Old Testament on, the old, on the, your right side and the New Testament on the left side. 
But notice some other beautiful aspects of this church. You'll notice that it's in a cross, the shape of a cross, the sign of our faith. You'll notice we have this beautiful granite altar with two huge pendants holding up the table of the altar, representing the Ten Commandments, the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. You'll notice that there are three steps going up to the altar, reminding us that when we sacrifice our Lord on the altar, it is indeed the work of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that saves us. There are so many beautiful aspects of this church that lead us ever closer to God. And so it's good for us to come together regularly as God's faithful people here in this church, for we are the church. And there's another very important aspect of what we need to pay attention to today as we celebrate the feast of the dedication of Saint John Lateran. You'll notice that in the first reading, there was a mention of the Temple of Jerusalem, and from it flowed this water that made all the land fertile. It was an image of predestination of what heaven is like, where we will be given an abundance of life in the presence of God. And in this morning's second reading, we are reminded that we are temples of God. In our baptism, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in our midst, and so we are called to be holy as well. We are signs of the church in everything that we do, every moment of our lives. And in this morning's gospel, we hear our Lord Jesus get very angry with the people of his day because they took advantage of those coming into the temple to worship and overcharging them for the temple sacrifices that they were about to offer. And it's a reminder to us that all that we have is a gift from God, and we need to share it generously. Yes, as we gather around our Lord's table to join with the universal church in recalling that we are called to be church, that is the presence of God in the midst of the community. Let us pray that every day, in fact, every moment of our day, we will be worthy to be called the church. Our response will be, please, please, Lord, please stand. <laughs> we gather today in thanksgiving for our community. Let us pray also for the many needs in our world and in our lives. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all the leaders of our church that the Holy Spirit works to lead them for the good of the church, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our country, that they help us become a nation of peace, understanding, and unity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all our veterans, acknowledged especially this Thursday, for the generous sacrifices they made for our country, also for all who have fallen, that their families will be comforted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Mr. Tosti, the teachers and staff, that they may continue to mirror God's mercy and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our SKS community, may we always be guided to live a life of peacefulness and gratitude. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of St. Catherine's students, that they may show kindness to all of God's people, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the sick and all our loved ones who have passed, especially the family and friends in our school community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving Father, grant these petitions that come from our grateful hearts. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our preparation hymn. Hymn number 306, or er, sorry, hymn number 305. 305, our God is here. Here in this time, here in this place, here we are standing face to face. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. Here for the broken, here for the strong, here in this temple. stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. We set the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good of all of his holy church. O Lord, accept the offerings made here and grant that by them those who seek your favor may receive in this place the power of the sacraments and the answer to their prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in your benevolence, you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we will make our death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, all the clergy and your entire people. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, hymn number 367, Bread of Angels. Precious 
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, you chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth. Grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may 
be made the temples of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, number 587, 587, Christ Be Our Light. Longing for thy viewing in darkness, longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your hope, your holy people, light for the Uh, could I have two members of the Student Council, Grace Vanderwag, Juan Salonero, would you help Monsignor make the presentations for the students for the first, peacemakers for the first trimester? Before we make the Peacemaker Awards for the first trimester, I want to thank our parents for joining us today. I want to thank all those who joined us virtually and for the attentions of our stu students across the street. My thanks to the seventh grade for the preparation for this Mass, for Mr. to Mr. Berman, Mrs. Tuig, Mrs. Loftus, and Ms. Quigley.
At this time, we'll present across the street in their individual classrooms to peacemakers from kindergarten through fifth grade. Please join me in acknowledging the following students for setting a great example of peace, kindness, respect, and compassion, just as Jesus taught us. In kindergarten, Olivia Walsh, Charlie Urkel, and Brendan Slattery. Congratulations. In first grade, Lucy Duncan, Michaela Sullivan, and Jack Orr. Congratulations. In second grade, Sean Mahan and Christian Vento. In third grade, Will Longstreth and Olivia Davis. In fourth grade, Ryan McCoy and Sophie Anderson. In fifth grade, Arlen Roth and Anthony Reese. And for the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, we'd ask the sixth graders to come forward to receive their pin and certificate from Monsignor Browers and Student Council. In sixth grade, Kayla Wereznik and Alexis Brennan Rothschild. Congratulations. In seventh grade, Bridget Staley and Janie Marinello. And in eighth grade, Molly McVeigh and Owen Payton. Congratulations to all our peacemakers. I hope you enjoy, or have, have, if you haven't seen, make sure you enjoy, enjoy the Wildcat 105 video. Parents will be, uh, when I get across the street, I'll remind Mrs. Condell to send that out. You'll enjoy another uh, production by the class of 2022. As they say at the end of every video, which I really enjoy, be kind, be nice, and be you. Have a great day, everybody.